So, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the Horniman. Um, uh, our um, collections have been established since 1901. We're based in South London, in Forest Hill, um, and we were established by a tea trader and ph philanthropist called Frederick Horniman. And Frederick travelled the world and he collected objects wherever he went and he brought them back to his house and he stuffed them into his house and it got to a point where his wife was like, enough is enough. I cannot cope with more objects. Um, either they go or I go. So he decided to hand over his house and his collection to the people of London in perpetuity. So um, those are our roots. That's how we were, were founded. So we have collections, world-class collections, um, of over 350,000 objects, um, covering collections of anthropology, natural history. That's our famous overstuffed walrus, for those that might not have encountered him before. He has his own Twitter account. Um, and musical instruments. Um, we also have an aquarium where we're undertaking groundbreaking research on coral reproduction. And we have 16 and a half acres of glorious gardens. We're, we're often known as London's largest community museum. We're not in the centre of London. We're a little bit off the beaten track. So, what's the Horniman for? Well, our vision, our mission is very clear. Our vision is to use our worldwide collections and the gardens to encourage a wider appreciation of the world, its peoples and their cultures, and its environments. And we think it's, it's more important than ever to follow this mission and vision at our museum. And this is what drives everything that we do whether it's exhibitions, events, um, the, the curatorial work that we do, our community engagement, our work with schools, this is at the heart of everything. And it's backed up by some core values. You can see the values here encompassing respect for the world's diverse cultures and valuing difference. When you go for a job interview at the Horniman, unless you're kind of seen to embody these values, you, you won't get to work at the Horniman. This is really important for all of our, our staff, that they personify this set of values and our vision. So that's what we think we're about. Um, how do our audiences look at us? What's our, our brand identity? So our world-class collections and estate, we think and they think, offer a unique opportunity to understand the world around us. They are so eclectic. We have indoor and outdoor. And we celebrate that uniqueness. Our communications encourage people to discover more through connections and contrasts. Human beings, how we are similar, how we are different. Our tone is human, realistic, and warm. We emphasize stories about human connections to our objects. Emotional and intellectual responses are equally as valid. Above all, we think, and our audiences think, we're pretty wonderful. Um, people find wonder and amazement and surprise when they come to the Horniman, and that's, and that's really important to us. Fun is very important to us. So, I'm not going to go through all of those statistics, don't worry. So, our general audience, um, we have over 900,000 visits each year. Um, that's been a huge increase in um, recent years of, of close to 50%. And that's been driven by um, our public program in the main, um, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. Now, our audience is majority local, so they're local to the museum. They're repeat, 
Some people come every day. You see them in the cafe every day with their kids um, and their family in the majority. So we get 66% um, uh, uh, of our audience are, are a family audience. And this statistic at the bottom is really important to us, and that's visitor satisfaction. So we, we have a 98% visitor satisfaction rating. So this data is um, collected through our annual survey, which is a rolling program that we run throughout the year. I've just noticed the time, and I can't believe I've only got three minutes. Right, I'm going to speed up. Okay, so our audience development commitments are here. So um, uh, in terms of the work that we do, these are the things that we're committed to doing. So increasing and diversifying our visitors. We need to get more visitors through the door um, because more visitors will help us with our income generation, and that's increasingly important to us in an era of declining public funding. Um, we're committed to cultural diversity, social value, our local community, and um, cultural and cross-arts influence as we try to develop our, a creative hub in South London. Um, in terms of segmentation, so the main growth of our audience um, will come from um, those top three segments, and we use a segmentation system called Audience Spectrum, um, which uses um, data on attitudes to culture, um, along with postcode mapping, um, to segment audiences. So Metroculturals, for us, there are highly engaged, prosperous audiences. Um, they're liberal, urbanites, and they're our best prospect for new work and for cultural innovation. In terms of experience seekers, these are active um, students, recent graduates in early to mid careers. Um, they, they're seeking out opportunities to, um, experiential opportunities to socialize with their friends. And they, ex they share all their experiences digitally. And then Kaleidoscope Creativity, who have low levels of cultural engagement. They're culturally diverse and often economically challenged. We have schools who are a priority group, and then we do a lot of work with marginalised and vulnerable groups. You can see here, um, under uh, refugees, asylum seekers, disability groups, users of mental health services. Um, so I'm going to move along a bit. So our public programme must embody our vision and values, and it must be audience-focused. And we're always clear who it's aimed at, um, and it helps us, in terms of these events and exhibitions, keep our existing audiences engaged and bring new audiences through new themes. Those are some of our strands. So... Today, I wanted to just give you a snapshot of our public programming. So this summer, we celebrated Brazil. We had a festival of Brazil, um, which we delivered in partnership um, with so many people that we're really grateful for that helped us. And it was really a Brazilian takeover of the Horniman. Um, uh, the um, ambition was to showcase both Brazil and London-based Brazilian artists, and we featured music, dance, street art, outdoor theatre, photography, um, and we reached out into the town centre as well, um, and it was funded by Arts Council. So I've got some photos here, um, and we had aims around audience, cultural exchange. We wanted to develop those partnerships, we wanted, everything needs to come back to the collections, we wanted to use the collections as inspiration. And uh, above all, we wanted a participative, fun programme. Um, and there was so much content. I'm not going to read it all out, but um, it was an amazing couple of months. Um, and I'm going to show you a little video when I get to it. There's some nice photos here of... Um, uh, that was a favela installation in our gardens. Um, so that's even more content. Um, I believe that you're going to get copies of the presentation 
um, afterwards. So, um, and I'd love to speak to anyone about any of the elements. But a key, a key component is that we delivered 45 costume, decoration, and choreography workshops with 22 of our community groups covering all of these vulnerable and marginalised um, um, groups. Um, so they really were participants in the delivery of the programme. So these are just some more photos. So in terms of results, um, we believe this to be the most successful um, summer programme that we've run. Um, we had some real um, successes against our aims. Um, you can see that we attracted over the summer 195,000 visits. Um, now, 18,000 of those visits were kind of participation in the events that happened. Um, and we had really strong feedback in terms of um, likely to return. And above all, we were we celebrated the cultural exchange between the UK and Brazil um, and introduced our audiences to, a, to another culture and the reality of, of um, the experiences of those people, peoples in, in Brazil. So I wanted to show you a little video just to kind of give you a, um, a closing memory of what the festival was like. Um, and I'd just like to thank you again. The Monument Festival of Brazil is a vibrant season of specially curated events, from concerts to dance performances, street arts, photographic display, all of them coming together to present a colourful snapshot of Brazilian art and culture today. The theme of this year's festival was the cultural exchange between Brazil and the UK. For the third year, we organised an open call for new commissions for emerging artists and we selected five new projects celebrating the collaboration between Brazil and the UK. These new works will be presented at our large-scale public events and as part of the family programme. The piece that we made, it's called NOS. It's inspired by the idea of cannibalism, of eating each other's cultures. So me being Brazilian, him being English and transforming and making this piece. It felt like a perfect opportunity for us to explore this collaboration with that setting of a Brazil cultural event happening in England. This installation that we are seeing here is called Mohinho. It's a final result of a two-week residency from two Carioca artists. They came from Rio, especially here to run a series of workshops with schools, adults with learning disabilities, asylum seekers. Now we have a proper Rio favela, very colourful one in South London. One of our exciting UK-Brazil partnerships as part of the Festival of Brazil has been between Mandinga Arts and Robson Rosa, who created an installation, Heaven and Hell, What Else, in Gallery Square. And this will be taken down and used as part of our carnival closing event at the end of the summer. As part of Robson's three-week residency with us, he worked closely with the Horniman Learning Team and he performed as part of our Queer Late event. Brazilian Collective Gandai Arts have been working with lots of our school, community and youth partners to create costumes, dance, performances and decorations for today's brilliant event. Today is the result of over 40 workshops on site and in schools, churches, children, elderly. It's been amazing. So everything you see here is part of a joint effort and I couldn't be happier. Working with the Hornymen, it's been a partnership made in heaven because they say dream and do it. Incredible workshops and partnerships, thanks to the Horny Men. I've been able to bring different groups of learning disabled adults to work along with Gandaya. We've all really enjoyed the workshops and then we're really excited being in the carnival with some of our costumes that we've helped design. I make it the hats and glitter. Gandaya also worked with our long-term partners, Trinity Lab and Conservatoire of Music and Dance. Twelve of their groups have created new performances today based on Brazilian culture and also Brazilian objects that are toured from the Horniman collections to their building. For our summer adult slate, award-winning choreographer Jean Abreu was commissioned to create Labyrintho, an exciting and immersive night of music and dance across the museum galleries. This year, the Horniman Summer Festival has also taken over the streets of Forest Hill. We commissioned four Brazilian street artists to create murals in the Forest Hill area, and they're also painting here at the Horniman today. 
It's been incredible to collaborate with such an exciting range of artists from the UK and Brazil, and we can't wait for this to influence what we do in the future. Dancing with everyone, kids, family, you know, grandparents, they all get involved, which is really lovely. Music and dancing, they're nice. It's quite unique compared to some other places. You can run around freely and do everything you like. I feel home, like, you know, like the weather reminds a bit of our home country. We're having an absolute amazing day. It's the first I've been here and it's lovely to have this kind of thing in our community. There's food, there are children playing, there is music, there is carnival going on, and I love it, love it. Festa Julina!